Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and today uh, we'll be going to do the topic called heteroscedasticity. Right. So that is how it's written, right? So today we're going to be doing uh, the, the, the problem of heteroscedasticity which means what happens if the error variance is not constant. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and you know set up our problem here. You know let's suppose we have uh, uh, we want to find out the relationship between the income levels and the savings. You know let's suppose this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. We want to find out the relationship between income levels and savings. Well, generally we know that uh, as income level increases, savings also tend to increase. Right, so this is generally our level. So this is a regression line which is denoted as y, which is our savings is equal to alpha plus beta hat or let's say beta into x uh, plus some error term. Right, so you know this is something uh, which is represented by uh, this is the regression. This is the line which represents which is rep represented by this equation. And you know we have a scatter plot. You know something like this here. Uh, each point uh, represents a single individual with, with his, his or her own income and savings level. So, you know, you have, you know, kind of in each point here, right? So, uh, before we turn and we decide what is uh, heteroscedasticity, uh, let's understand a term uh, called homoscedasticity. You, you must have watched uh, you must have watched the classic uh, linear reg regression model assumptions in that we discussed uh, the the assumption of homoscedasticity. Now, what does homoscedasticity state? Right. So, homoscedasticity uh, it's actually one of the important assumptions of uh, classic linear regression model, and it says that that variance of each disturbance term. So, it says that the various of each disturbance term, uh, the is some constant. So it's actually a constant. So uh, you know, diagrammatically, I'm, I'm I'm saying that that the variance of these terms, you can clearly see that uh, you know the distance from you know from the line from the regression line, it's kind of a constant. You know, the 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 error terms do not do not tend to increase. Uh, or do not tend to vary with income levels, right? So, you know, these, these small dots do not tend to vary with income levels. Their variance is actually a constant, which is the, uh, which is, uh, the assumption of homoscedasticity. Well, uh, if I say that is not the case in the real terms, or if we get a data which is actually shown up like this, right? So let's suppose if I say this is my savings, uh, this is my savings. These are my income income levels, and this is my regression line. What if I say that these points or these error terms, you know, they are distributed like this? You know, as I increase my income, there tend to be a lot of variance, uh, uh, you know, variance away from the line. You know, what if something like that happens? Well, let's try and understand it, right? So let's suppose. This is actually a classic case of heteroscedasticity. Now, as income level increases, uh, people tend to have a different level of savings. Well, over here at a lower income level, uh, you know, people kind of have almost the same level of savings. So over here, uh, with, with this income level, people have the same level of saving. But when the income level becomes this, uh, then the, there are people who save a lot less and there are people people who save a lot more right you know uh, that the 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 income the uh, the savings tend to vary with income here so in this case what is happening is this is a case of heteroscedasticity in which the variance of the error term is not a constant as you can clearly see that the variance of the error term the the variance of the error term is not a constant uh, as income is increasing uh, you can clearly see the there are the 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 error term you know the variance in error term there are the it's also increasing right so in this case that the variance of the error term is a constant it's kind of like they more or less follow the same pattern so over here they are not following the same pattern right so 
in this case over here, uh, in this case over here, that the variance of savings, in this case, the variance of savings remains the same at all income levels. You know, it doesn't matter. So the variance of the savings remains same at all income levels. However, in this case, the variance of savings uh, does not remain same. You know, as you can clearly see that the variance of uh, of the higher income salaries uh, of higher income families is more uh, than the variance of you know low income families right so that means there's a lot of variability in savings but in this case there's no variability in savings you know uh, people tend to save more or less the same but over here as you can clearly see uh, this person uh, at this income level uh, it's it's saving a lot different than this person at the same income level Right. So this is the classic case of heteroscedasticity. In this video, we're just uh, introducing the problem here, introducing what heteroscedasticity is. Now there are several reasons. You know, there are various reasons uh, for heteroscedasticity to occur. So we're going to understand various reasons why does it occur. We're not going to uh, have a full uh, list of it. But we're just going to see few uh, few few reasons here. Now there are few models, uh, I'm just going to come down with the first reason. There are few models wherein people, you know, uh, the variables tend to be error learning. Now what do you mean by error learning? Let's suppose if I take an example of, you know, there's a classic example of, uh, you know, of typewriter. So let's suppose if I want to find a relationship between the number of typing errors uh, versus the number of hours put in practice. So let's suppose if I want to find a relationship between number of typing errors versus the hours put to practice. So if we kind of put this on a plot, uh, you know, we know that that initially, uh, you know, there will be a lot of variance uh, in the number of typing errors. You know, there will be people who won't be who won't be making a lot of errors. There will be people who will be making a lot of errors. However, as the number of hours put to practice increases, the variability, the variability in the number of typing errors decreases, right? So, which means that the error term, the variance of the error term, is not going to be a constant here. Right. So one of the reasons is about the, you know, uh, it's it's kind of error learning model where you learn something. And uh, again, in this case, the variance that does not remain constant, constant, it tend to decrease or increase at some rate. Right. Uh, now, another reason could be. Could be, uh, you know, elimination, you know, if we kind of eliminate uh, an important variable. So if we kind of eliminate an important variable from the model, you know, which is again, a, uh, you know, a classical, uh, an assumption of a classic linear regression model. So if, if let's suppose we, uh, we kind of eliminate an important variable, then again, uh, our data set can show the problem of heteroscedasticity. Right. Now, another reason could be, another reason for heteroscedasticity could be skewness in the data. Right. So uh, yeah, if you don't know what skewness is, you should you know, definitely watch the skewness video. Uh, the skewness in the data. Let's suppose if I take an example of, uh, you know, if you pick up any model which involves income, which involves wealth and uh, which involves education. Right. If you pick, pick up any model, uh, you know, which which involves these three variables, income, wealth and education. Well, it's well known that the distribution of income and wealth in most societies is uneven. So uh, with the bulk of income and wealth is being owned by uh, people who are at the top, people who are few at the top. So as you already know, uh, you know, few people will own most of the resources. Right. So that again will show a lot of variability in the data. And again, you know, there would be the problem of heteroscedasticity. Another problem would be, uh, you know, it would be the functional mis misspecification, right? So if you kind of misspecify, uh, you know, 
the model you know uh, let's suppose instead of taking a simple linear if, if instead of taking a linear model you kind of take a, a log linear model so you know you can understand that instead of taking a linear model uh, you take a log linear model uh, in that case you know if the if the model better suited was better suited with the linear model and you've taken a log linear model then you uh, then again your data your your data and your regression will show the problem of heteroscedasticity right so well uh, we've understood what are the reasons for heteroscedasticity and we've understood what is heteroscedasticity now let us understand uh, what are the possible effects of this problem here now first thing is that your uh, your estimators your beta 2 uh, your beta estimators are no longer blue why they are no longer blue because they uh, blue means they are they are not best linear unbiased estimators uh, that means that there are some other estimators which has a lower sampling variance uh, how uh, another thing that you have to understand that the the estimators they are still unbiased however they are no longer best right uh, best or let's say they are no longer efficient which means there are some other estimators which are available which are uh, which have a lower sampling variance now what do you mean by unbiased unbiased means let's suppose if i say that uh, this is the value of our beta population you know this is the exact va value of the beta population parameter now this is your model with uh, heteroscedasticity that means uh, the the mean value of this uh, this this curve here is actually around the beta hat which means it's still unbiased however there is some other uh, there is some other uh, data set or there is some other regression model which will actually give you a lower sampling variance which is something like that right so that means it's going to have a lower sampling variance fine so suppose you're understanding that the data uh, the 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 estimators are still unbiased however they are no longer best or they are no longer efficient so what should we do uh, to remove the error of heteroscedasticity well as as you understand as the sample size increases indefinitely you know as the sample size increases indefinitely then the the problem of heteroscedasticity uh, is likely to be eliminated and the value of beta hat it's likely to go the, uh, you know close to beta population however that doesn't happen in real terms which means we have to have some measures uh, to eliminate heteroscedasticity now, this is something we're going to be doing in the next video right so we'll be doing the method of generalized least squares in the next video wherein we'll be understanding the method uh, to eliminate and to you know uh, see uh, how to eliminate heteroscedasticity so i suppose you're understanding this point here you've understood everything in this video uh, thank you very much for watching guys and make sure that uh, you explore this website that is perfect-scores.com uh, give us your valuable like on facebook.com slash perfect scores and give your valuable feedback on perfect scores 89 at gmail.com so that'll be what the video guys thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one